Okay, now remember, when we see GB1, it's very important that we say we want to build the International Space Station. That's the only way we can get to that ball pit. Oh. Oh, hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and this is my friend, uh, Steve. No, I didn't jump into the Mandalorian timeline and steal Grogu in the attempts to build the International Space Station and promises there's a ball pit inside. That's silly, and you really shouldn't say things like that. Grogu, I'm, Steve, I'm gonna put you down right here. In this episode, we're going to be building the Metal Earth Premium Series Iconics International Space Station. And this build promises to be a lot of fun with all of its intricate parts and, of course, accurate detail. Now, why does everyone keep complaining about the cylinders? Why are these solar panels so hard to line up? And is it really that hard to make everything straight? Well, those are some good questions. Let's get some answers on the workbench. And boom, there we have it, all 15 pages of instructions to build the International Space Station. Look at all these cylinders and small bits of detail. There's a lot here we're going to have to do, and I can already see a few things we're going to have to touch on. The first thing we'll touch on is how to make cylinders simply and consistently. The second thing we'll look at is all the smaller bits of detail, like parts 22 and 25. And lastly, we'll talk about connecting all of our parts together and how to line them up correctly and make those connections nice and strong. But before we do, let's go ahead and talk about the basics for all those new metal model builders out there. First things first, these metal models require us to cut out our pieces, then shape them using whatever we can. Once we have our parts correctly shaped, we can connect them together by bending or twisting our tabs. The way we bend or twist our tabs is indicated in the instructions by these circles and triangles. Personally, I always try to follow the instructions the first time when it comes to bending our tabs if I can. Then when the model's complete, I'll go over everything again and change any of the tabs that might stand out. That's how you get that museum quality you hear so much about. Oh, hey there, Billy. Um, yeah, we don't play with death rays, at least not in here. How about this tasty thermal detonator? Wow, hungry little guy. Now, what tools do we need to build the International Space Station? Actually, a really good question. Luckily, we have a tool expert that knows everything about living in space. Timothy? That thing ate my eggs! <sighs> Timothy, I'm really sorry he ate your eggs. Listen, we're going to drop off Lucas soon, and when we do, I'll get you some more eggs. But can you please just tell us what tools we need for the ISS? The International Space Station is a primitive, collaborative, habitable lab in space. The ISS took decades to build, but this one will take considerably less time. For this build, you will need... Nippers. Tweezers. Pliers, cylinder tools, and a small break. Hey, where are my berries? <coughs> uh, now, these are just our recommendations, and you really don't need anything but nippers and tweezers to get the job done. But of course, having the right tools will make everything a lot easier for you. Now we've looked at our instructions and we have all our tools, there's only one thing left to do. We're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers here on the show, and if you happen to look down and see a little red button down there, I would really love it if you pressed it. You see, we built all kinds of really cool stuff here on the show, and having you along with me would be really great. No judgment, though. No, no, seriously, take your time. Take your time. Red button right there. Oh, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Now, uh, uh-oh, okay, just, just one moment. Hey, GB1, yeah, our little friend Bartholomew here seems to have gone missing, and I think he's on his way to the kitchen. If Timothy finds him, there might be a little bit of an incident. Would you mind trying to find him? Thanks, buddy. Okay, now let's get to the ISS. The Metal Earth Premium Series International Space Station is a model that requires patience, accuracy, and consistency. This is not a build we can do quickly, and if you want the best from this kit, you really do need to take your time with it. The first thing I want to talk about is shaping these cylinders. Let's face it, the ISS has lots of cylinders. 
Okay, it's mostly cylinders with a few solar panels, so getting these right is very important, not just for the skill, but also for the look. Let's take a look at part one. Studying this piece for a moment, we can see it has a cap, solar panels, and a big flat piece along the bottom. Now, there are many different ways we can get a cylinder shape. Personally, when it comes to bending pieces like this, I like cylinder tools to help me get a nice, consistent shaping. I found the best way to use them is to start with a tool bigger than the end shape you're trying to get. After applying an even amount of pressure around the metal, you should have a nice, roundish shape. Now we can grab a smaller size tool and work our way down in sizes until the two edges are about to touch. The reason for doing it this way is to avoid accidentally bending the metal where the detailed edge lines are. It's actually a lot easier to do because that part of the metal is weaker than where the metal doesn't have any of that edge detail. It's easier than you might think to accidentally bend this detail out of shape, and it's almost impossible to fix, so just be a little bit careful when bending around that edge detail. If you're only using tweezers to shape this part, I would recommend doing lots of micro bends. After a few passes of micro bending your part, you should have a cylinder almost formed. When it comes to connecting our tabs on the cylinders, we have a choice. We can either hide our tabs or let them hang out all loud and proud. If you're like me, you would want to hide your tabs, and unfortunately, that's a double-edged sword. You see, we need to bend the tab side of the part back 140 degrees, and then bring the tab where the insertion hole is just over it. With a little bit of luck, the tab should fall into the insertion hole and create almost a locking effect. As you can see, while hiding the tabs might look great, it can be a real pain in the butt to get it done. The pieces here aren't always made with this technique in mind, and because of that, you can be a little bit difficult to get all of our edges to match up just right, and if you're not careful, you might have some small gaps. So use this technique of hiding tabs wisely, and remember, you don't always have to hide your tabs. Speaking of bending things wisely, let's move on to our second point, bending some of the smaller details. It's no surprise that the ISS is full of small details. It's what really makes it look so good as a model. These details, though, can be as easy as bending a box or as difficult as connecting thin sticks together. Let's take a look at parts 21 and 23 to get a better picture. These little guys are simple to form, but hard to connect together because they're so skinny. Using multiple tweezers is a great idea here to help you get these connected. Just remember to alternate the way you twist your tabs here. If you twist these tabs, or quite frankly, any parts tabs all the same way, the connected pieces will be very shaky and, well, weak. Alternating the way we twist our tabs is key to getting all of our parts straight, including the solar panels. And talking about panels, the solar panels on the ISS is another detail we should take a look at. Throughout the ISS, you'll shape small panels and big ones alike. It's really important to make sure that you're bending or attaching these panels in the proper orientation. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I accidentally installed and shaped my solar panels backwards. This is really easy to do and almost not worth reversing. Make sure to take extra care with your solar panels and make use of that 360 picture that Metal Earth offers to help you with the orientations. Lastly, another little bit of detail I want to touch on is part 25, and one similar to it. With these pieces, we are not only having to bend two cylinders, but also a weird ball shape in the middle. To get the best possible look with our ball, I recommend bending one pedal at a time after forming the upper or lower cylinder. The pedals here are a little bit small, so tools are hard to use. By grabbing the top of the pedal and bending it slightly in and repeating this action for the bottom, you will have a nice half moon shape. Once we have one pedal shape to our liking, take the one next to it and match the sides leaving no gaps. Repeat this for every single one and by the end you'll have a really nice ball shape. Now we just need to connect all of these assemblies together. The third and final thing I want to touch on is connecting all of our assemblies together. Like I said earlier, altering the way we twist our tabs is a great way to secure our detail, but you also want to apply pressure. By pushing the pieces together while securing your tabs, you're ensuring that you're getting as much of the tabs in your tweezers as possible. This will make for a secure fit with little to no gaps between the parts, and it will also help us from keeping the station from sagging. That's right, tight connections are the key to having a non-floppy station. 
When it comes to bending our tabs over, a similar practice should be followed from before, even in the hard spots. These two methods don't just work on the bigger pieces either, but they also work really well on the smaller ones around the station. You want to make sure to take care when handling some of the smaller parts to ensure you don't move them around too much. Most likely throughout building this model, you might accidentally bend some of that smaller detail out of shape. If it's connected well, it should be easily fixed and reshaped by the end. But if that detail's moving around, you could have it accidentally fall out of the model. And getting that little bit of detail back into the model at this point might be impossible. So I really can't stress it enough with this model, secure connections are a must. And with this last little twist, we have our station. And there we have it, the Metal Earth International Space Station. This model was a lot of fun to build, not just because of all the small bits of detail that we have here, but just because of how much detail Metal Earth actually put into the model itself. I mean, there's just so much laser etching on here, the more you look at it, the more you really see. And yes, it is difficult. I would definitely not recommend this for new builders out there, but for those expert builders or someone looking for something a little bit more complicated, this is a great build to look at. It pretty much challenges you in every form of metal model building, because you have some really small cylinders we have to do as well as some doming and those little bits of satellites down here which have those little egg shapes that we have to form can be a little tricky too and that's pretty much why I can't recommend this for new builders just because there's so much detail here that might really give you a hard time if you've never bent them before and overall that will make the model suffer and you might really not be happy with what you have in the end but if you have that experience and you're willing to try something a little bit more difficult the Metal Earth ISS might be for you this is definitely, like I said before, one of my favorite models we've built here on the show. All right, Groovers, that brings us to the end of our show. I had a really good time building the ISS with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we've got all kinds of really cool models coming out in the future. Want to get your own ISS? Check out GrooveBuilders.ca. We have all kinds of really cool models on there at great prices with fast shipping to the United States and Canada. Until next time, Groove Builders, keep building. Now, I gotta find our friend there and return him back to his timeline. I mean the ball pit! The ball pit, yes, the ball pit. <laughs>